Oh. Okay. Um, yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Eric, and I'm a Drupal developer. And my favorite Olympic sport. I'm still sort of um, I'm reeling from that uh, 1500 meter men's final last night, which, if you get a chance, I, I recommend uh, you watch because it was th absolutely thrilling. Okay. Desktop one. That looks good. What's this here? Oh, I have to record this. No, I don't. All right, I better just allow that, right? Okay. Oh, Zoom wants to do more. Quit Zoom and reopen. Full control of your computer. Yeah. Let's go later on that one. Let's see, <laughs> if I can Let's see if I can do some sharing here, right? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Can you all see my screen? On the left-hand side, you should see the, uh, the demo pages. Yeah. I mean, the presentation on the right-hand side is the um, the... the Made up website. Okay, yep. great. All right, let's start. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the presentation from zero to Drupal with DDEV and XDebug, local de local Drupal development with debugging tools. Okay, about me, Eric Sod. I'm a Drupal developer since 2009, professional Drupal developer since 2012. Note the time difference. Uh, full stack developer focusing on back end development, emphasis in Drupal 8 and above, student of design patterns. Okay, about this session, we're going to do a getting started. We're going to do DDEV Drupal quick start. That includes a live ish demo. We're going to do DDEV Drupal that's under version control. We're going to configure XDebug in PHP Storm. We're going to configure XDebug in VS Code. We're going to compare debugging tools. And then we're going to look at a problem where XDebug is the better tool. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so what's the scenario? I got a brand new computer and I want to fix all the things. Yes, that is exactly what I was saying this demonstration would be about, would be zero to Drupal. So when I took this screenshot, there were 8,000 things wrong with Drupal and 21,000 issues. Not going to be a problem because now I have the computer and soon I'll have DDEV. What's the prerequisite to do all of that work? Okay, DDEV, really the only prerequisite. DDEV installs on Mac OS, Linux, Windows, Gitpod, Code Spaces, and Manual. For tonight's presentation, I will be using um, Mac OS with Homebrew. Okay, so Homebrew is a package manager that's on Macintosh and I think also on Linux these days. Anyway, it makes life really, really simple for you to get started with this sort of development work. Just go over to the, um, the Bruce site, copy one quick line off of them, drop that line into a terminal, wait a few moments and Homebrew will be installed. Hooray. Now that Homebrew is installed, use it to install the following packages globally on your system. Brew install PHP, Brew install Composer, Brew install Docker, Brew install Orbstack, which I will speak on quickly in a moment. I want, just want to finish the instructions here. Run Orbstack, run the Orbstack app from applications to finish setup, choosing Docker as an option. Answer any prompts to allow Orbstack access. So what's happened is, um, as you can see, um, our friend Kalima is no longer recommended as part of the Docker installation. Uh, you may or may not have noticed if you're using Colima for your um, Docker provider, um, that it's really not working very well anymore. And, and I had an experience where it was sort of crumbling apart on me. And then I went over here and I said, oh, so there's Orbstack. So Orbstack is similar to Docker. Um, you get it here. Um, it's got this, this, you know, this user interface, which is pretty simple, you know, sort of Docker, Docker desktop ish, but without quite as much complication. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen to the, when my pro trial expires in 12 days, I'm not that thrilled with spending $8 a month on this, but we'll see. Cause so far Orbstack has been, you know, seamless and performant. Okay. Let's get back to the presentation. Okay, so what was I? Oh, so now that we have those prerequisites in place, time to brew install 
DDEV forward slash DDEV forward slash DDEV, one time installation of MK cert. Okay, depending on your project requirements, maybe you need NPM, maybe you need NBM. These are these are globally installed. Okay, live demo. Okay, this is going to be live-ish, right? I was going to do these demos live, but then I thought, you know, it'll be easier to just do this if I do do a, a screen capture and narrate, right? The thing that I want to demo here is that the the quick start in um, DDEV at this point is so strong that if you have any any questions about what you're doing in DDEV and how to get Drupal onto your desktop, just do this quick start. It's really amazing. Okay. So basically, this is just cutting and pasting off of the that page we just looked at on the web. And this is kind of our, let me see if I can get this little thing to hide a little bit. Let me put that over. Oh, that's better. So here, so this was in the top part is the, oh, hang on. Oops. Okay. In the top part is the slide we just looked at. And in the bottom part is my, is my command line. So I'm just going to run this and I'm going to narrate it. So basically, copy that, make a directory. CD into the directory. Okay. DDEV configure. Okay. DDEV start. Okay. Add your password. You know, goes into your Etsy host, but you don't have to know that. Just add your password. Okay, let's compose her in Drupal. Okay, let's update the config for DDEV. Okay, add Drush. And now do a Drush site install. Okay, last step, DDEV launch. And there's your Drupal. So now we'll just log in. And there you go, right? And I can promise you that anybody who's been around this uh, our Drupal space for any number of years to to be able to do something like this in this short amount of time, I just think it's awesome. So I had to demo it. Okay, DDEV Drupal under version control, right? So let's say so that 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 one we just looked at. Well, when we oh no, let's not do that. That one we just looked at um, was just the Drupal out of the, uh, using the DDEV recipe out of the DDEV quick start. But let's say you actually want to work on some issues, right? So you would go, this is a little out of scope. You would go up to the maintainer uh, uh, page in drupal.org, right? You would clone in your Drupal, you would CD into your Drupal, you would DDEV config, right? Um, to run more than one DDEV instance at a time, add a DDEV config local YAML, quite simple. These are just two quick echo steps to add that file in, not a big deal. DDEV launch and install Drupal or Drush site install, whichever you prefer. But then you'd have Drupal that's actually on, under the uh, version control, the same Drupal that 
you know, the uh, maintainers work on. Okay, configure xdebug in PHP Storm. All right, so there's a lot of documentation about all of this, and I tried to boil this down to as few uh, number of steps as possible. I think I did pretty well with that, right? So this slide is the instructions here are actually repeated next to on this slide, which is a which is of course also a um, screen share as well. So the first thing you'll want to do, maybe I'm going too quickly here. Hang on. Oh, I didn't need. First thing you want to do is you want to confirm that the DDEV plugin is installed. Oh, there's my there's the thing I was looking for. Okay, the DDEV plugin, I, I was kind of on the fence about the DDEV plugin for uh, PHP Storm, but now I like it, and I'll explain why in a later step. Okay, after that, we can now DDEV xdebug on. DDEV, excuse me, xdebug is baked into DDEV. That's all you have to do uh, to, get it, to get it to be enabled. Okay, you can confirm this. You don't have to do, but you can just confirm that, that xdebug is enabled on your PHP in your ddev container by running php-v. Now what we have to do is we have to create uh, configurations. This goes a little bit fast, so I'm gonna stop a few times. So the type of configuration we want to create is a remote debug configuration. Okay, here's where the screen jumps around a little bit. What do you name this thing? You see the first field there is name and it's unnamed. So I try to keep it as simple as possible. And this is where the screen will jump just a little bit. And I go and I just collect the site name. Okay, paste that in. Okay, we will be filtering with the debug connection by the IDE key, right? And this will save you, if you haven't done this before, this will save you a lot. Oh, can I admit someone? This will save you lots of um, headache. Because what you want to type in this field is PHP storm all caps. Okay, so now let's add a server. Okay, the type of server, again, the naming again, right? Just keep going with the same name. Just call it what you've been calling it, right? And now we will be using path mappings because this is technically a remote server since it is the, the server in the container. And, and this part here was just the hardest thing for me to pick up, but you can actually type in there. And what do you type? Bar dub dub, uh, dub dub dub, HTML. Okay, apply, okay, apply. Okay, great. Okay, so now we're going to want to enable, I guess I have that backwards, enable the, okay. So what I did there was I set a break, oops, I set a breakpoint and I started listing for PHP debug connection. This thing will have to be forwarded up to 130 or so. Yeah, this was about where we were before. Okay, so I'm enabling start listing for PHP debug connections. Okay, set a breakpoint, go back to your browser reload your browser, and now we are in fact debugging. As you can see, I'm stepping over and getting debug information in the lower portion of this screen. And that's it, right? That's all, that's all you need to do to get this, to get this working. Um, let's continue. Okay, um, not that. Okay, so what I liked about what I mentioned before about the DDEV plugin settings is, is what I like particularly about it is this piece here, the PHP interpreter. It just sort of gets that out of the way. You don't exactly have to have the, the DDEV uh, plugin, but I think it just does a nice job, better than it's been doing. So they're, 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 they're working on it, obviously. Okay, moving on. Configure xdebug in VS Code. All right. So that's a lot of information there. And really the only thing we're looking at today is, is the remote explorer. But I started to build this slide and I'm like, you know, I'm a LAMP stack developer and these are all the, the um, uh, plugins I need in VS Code. I mean, if you're familiar with VS Code, you know that you have to add all the plugins, unlike PHP Storm, which comes everything all wrapped up together. So what we want here is the remote explorer. 
Okay, so this now I'm going to switch. Oh, now I'm going to switch out a little bit because um, let's escape out of that, right? Okay, let's get let's get the VS Code because I think these slides are pretty good, right? But they don't exactly uh, convey the the entire story, right? So okay, so we're going to open the the Drupal download or clone the directory. Okay, so what we're looking at here? Oh, let's get this out of my. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I get these things in VS Code. Don't know what they are, right? Okay, so what you're looking at here on the right-hand side of the, your screen is the uh, the VS Code window of the Drupal that's on my host computer. Okay, when you're working with remote explore, when you're working with VS Code and you're debugging, actually for most of the work you do with VS Code, when you you're working inside the container directly, right? That's what this is. That's what this is all about. So what you want to do here is you want to Click on the remote explorer, okay, and then find the web container that you want to um, go into, right? Now that you have this container open in, in a VS Code window, you don't even need this one from the host anymore. You can just close that right up, right? And the thing, the, thing, the first time I did this, okay, v oh, I admit, Okay, the first time I did this, um, I I couldn't see my Drupal from inside the container. And so it was, e you know, clicking around, clicking around. Finally, I found it that if I clicked on this little green bar over here and went here into my open configuration file, you know, everything being JSON configuration in VS Code, it's this line here to see the var dub 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 HTML because that's where we are when we're in the actual containers. We're in var www HTML. You can see it here in the you can see it here in the command line. And so that's why I made this screen because I thought I thought it was helpful because this was a little confusing at first, right? I'm in the container, but I don't see my Drupal and I'm looking at something. So anyway, off we go. Okay. Okay. And then an another good thing, and this is something that uh, Mike Inello had said at one point was that HTML, if you see HTML here and you see your Drupal, you know you're in the right place. Okay. okay, so now your extensions inside the container, when you first start to run in the container, your extensions have to be, for the most part, reinstalled in the container, right? And you'll see things like this, right? You know, this install container, DDEV, and of course, we're not using the DDEV manager. That's for something else entirely, which I don't think I'll, I'll ever bother to, to learn, but I may, right? And um, so just make sure that you, you have a look here to install your plugins into your container, which is now where you're doing your work. Okay. When inside the container, DDEV commands don't work. No DDEV X debug on, no DDEV X debug off, right? So, oh, this is slightly out of, out of it. So what we want to make sure is while we have this open is that PHP, oh, admit, PHP, PHP is installed. And you can see that it is, oh, no, here, that it is installed here, right? That's that's important because what we want to do here is, where is my terminal? There we are. We want to use this command instead, enable underscore X debug, disable underscore X debug. And there's this one time setup of the VS code dot VS code forward slash launch dot JSON. So I'm not really sure where that file got originated. Um, I think the first time I tried to debug, right, it generated that file for me. But just in case you need to make that, that file up, it's very simple. It's here in this dot VS code directory. It's this file right here, launch dot JSON. Okay, so, you know, when I, when I stumbled my way through this with VS Code, because I'm more of, a P, more of a PHP Storm person, when I stumbled my way through this, when I first opened this, it had all kinds of other configuration in. And that's totally fine, except that we're just doing the configuration for the thing that we want to do tonight, which is just xdebug. So I just pared the um, the file down to just the things that we needed. And in fact, in the slides, which I'm planning on sharing, I, I actually made this beautiful slide. So if someone wants to cut and paste directly, they can just go ahead and do that. 
Okay. Oh, this is also screen show time. Okay. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So what are we doing first? Yes. I want to just redo a couple steps here, which is to is to confirm that PHP debug is, is in fact installed in the container and we can see that it is. Okay. Let's go back to our Explorer or actually just a terminal really, right? Enable X debug. Okay. PHPV, if you like, or dash V, confirm that Xdebug is now enabled on in your container, which you are in. Okay, now what you need to do with this is you need to add the, this configuration file that I was just describing to you, the launch.json, right? And this is how watching the screen, this is how you do it, right? And you can see VS Code is more than willing to add a lot of configuration for you, but all we really want is the configuration that we want for the thing that we're doing tonight, which is just listening for Xdebug. Okay, so that's all set. You can close that file. Okay, so now you want to set a breakpoint. And then you have to click that little triangle up there to get the thing ready to be to start listening for you. And this is where actually v VS Code is better than PHP Storm because it gives you all this visual uh, clue that you're actually in a debugging session, whereas PHP Storm just sort of sits there without making any changes at all. But we're still following the same idea, same paradigm, which is we've enabled all the things in our um, uh, IDE. We go back to the browser, we refresh it, and we find out if, and of course this is a when, we find out that we are in fact now debugging, and we are in fact debugging. Here and all the good things that happened in Drupal, and we're able to see all of that. And continue. Yeah, this this goes on for a few more steps. I'll just let it play out because I wanted to just mention one other thing. So do a stop. And it's a good idea with Xdebug, even though it's a lot better than it used to be, but it's a good idea to, to disable it when you're done using it. You know, it's kind of like an, a debug on, debug off sort of a thing. And Xdebug had it's sort of bad old days where it was kind of a, a, a processor hog. Um, it's not so much that anymore, but still keep in mind that sometimes disabling Xdebug and re-enabling it still seems to get the job um, moving, still seems to get things moving forward. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about debugging tools, right? I think that there's a lot of emphasis for advanced developers to always be on the, um, the, the Xdebug, which is great. Right, All right. So I went ahead and I looked into the Xdebug debugger page on Drupal.org, and this is what it said: For advanced development, a debugger is necessary. Oh, I think to myself, a debugger will allow you to follow program execution and its effects, to observe the call stack of functions, and review the contents of variables at any point during execution. Okay, um, okay. Strikes me as a you know. It is what it is, right, on drupal.org. Drupal so then I went into xdebug.org and read their function trace uh, um, documentation. Xdebug allows you to log all function call, calls, including parameters and return values to a file in different formats. Those so-called function traces can be a help for when you are new to an application or when you are trying to figure out what exactly is going on when your application is running. The function traces can optionally show the values of variables passed to the functions and methods and also return va values. Okay, I like that. Okay, but what about Devel module, right? This is right off of the, the, the homepage of Devel. Devel module contains helper functions and pages for Drupal developers and inquisitive admins, right? The Devel module comes with numerous methods. That's my, my sense. Look at all of these methods. How many times has, have, have any of us used DSM? Tons and tons and tons and tons, right? And look at all these other ones. If you've never used KPR, give it a whirl. And now there's even Kint and Devel, right? Plus these other ones down in the bottom row. I don't even know what those are, right? And Devel does a whole nother bunch of other things, right? If you look at the help page on Devel, right? Further, what about just using print R of our dump, right? Sometimes you may just want to see a variable on a white screen, right? After all, we're doing web development, right? You can't 
do a stack trace when you're working this way, but you can, it, it, I've always found it's, it's extremely helpful for me sometimes to see what exactly is happening at the moment that I'm at where I'm doing my development. I've used this many times, print R, dollar my variable exit, var do, dollar my variable exit. You know, no law against it, right? Okay, we're gonna finish up the presentation by looking at a problem where Xdebug is the better tool. Here's the problem. I want to delete some taxonomy terms from a vocabulary, okay? The term names are supplied from a CSV file. I think, right? Okay, so this, you know, I get to use the big word, paradigm, right? So this is a paradigm shift, shift from what we've been looking at before. And what, in fact, we, you know, most of the demos that you see on these sort of things, right? Even in PHP Storm, they're all like, oh, this is great. All you have to do to confirm that your Xdebug is working is, is enable this one here, right? And it's like, okay, but what does that really do for me? But here we're looking at something where there is actually a reason to use Xdebug over anything else. Like I say, here's our problem, right? Got to delete some taxonomy terms, right? How do I do that? Well, I'm going to do that in a hook update, right? But first, look at look at this slide, right? Up until now, we have been, you know, enabling Xdebug in DDEV, configuring Xdebug in the IDE, setting a breakpoint in the code, reload the browser to begin a debugging session. However, when debugging a hook update, there is no browser. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to enable Xdebug. We want to set the breakpoint. We want to enable listening, obviously. Can't load the, the web page, but now we're going to run the uh, the the Drush up DB. So we're, we're going to do that. Okay. So as I mentioned, what I've got to do in this particular hook update, and again, this isn't the most complicated code. Hook update N has been around forever, right? But you, if you're writing code for this, you will want to make adjustments to low level things in the database. And so that's where you can work in an install a dot install file and write your hook, right, update, and then and then the the uh, the next the next number up where a number that hasn't been uh, registered by your database yet. So okay, we're not really looking at this code. This is just some code that I fashioned, right? I've got this um, uh, extra uh, uh, parsing file to to fashion, you know, this list of terms, right? There's not a great many terms that need to be deleted, but there's some. Right, the uh, for your information, the taxonomy I'm working with here has greater than six thousand terms, right? So I've got to make sure to delete sixty terms. They, when this CSV was handed off to me, I wasn't convinced that the uh, uh, the the person who's very knowledgeable, by the way, the person who who is very knowledgeable, was aware that if you delete a term in Drupal that has child terms all the child terms will also be deleted. So what I wanted to make sure before I made any commitment to an upstream database, particularly I find when you're working with taxonomy terms, because taxonomy terms are actually content. And once you've deleted a taxonomy term, it's gone. And so is its taxonomy term ID, it's TID. You got a big problem then when you deleted the wrong term. So I fashioned up this code, right? And you can see I'm gonna, you know, the only thing that I have are the names, Right, I'm working on a multi-site, so I'll have different TIDs anyway. So I wrote this very basic um, uh, query. You know, um, take a look in the term field data, right, and get and get the term name. Okay, from the from the term name, right. I wanted to now check its check check for its child term. So we're doing storage on the entity type ID, right? No, nothing too fancy, right? This is run in the middle regular code, right? So if it's empty, this is going to be safe to delete. And it's and if else, well, I don't know if it's safe to delete and I want them to know. It turns out that after I, I went back to my client and said, well, can I delete these terms? Because in fact, I did find one of these terms with, with children, right? But how would I have known that? in a giant taxonomy such as this without like going through each term in the UI and all kinds of things that would take half a day as opposed to 20 lines of code. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, all of this is already set. So now I can just, 
you know, my um, X debug is already on. I mean, my X debug configuration is already on. Okay. And if this gets stuck, no, it gets stuck. This usually unsticks it. Yeah, all right. Come on, you. There we are. Okay. So now we are ready to start running hook updates. Again, not the most complicated code, not the deepest, deepest depth of Drupal, Drupal which you can reach with uh, um, an, a debugger that you can really not reach with like a DSM or a printr. You'll never be able to figure it out. So I am, in fact, ready to... Um, um, you know, run run my specified pending updates, except of course my debugger is on. So as soon as I hit enter on this, right? It ran it, what? It ran it without telling me? Ah, uh, I'm so sorry, everyone. It was supposed to launch the debugger and it didn't. Yeah, yeah, it's still its own, it's still its own thing. So, <laughs> Still its own thing. So now, now it's spoiled because the entire database now has been changed. So I won't, I won't be able to find it. So I do apologize for that. That shouldn't have happened and didn't happen 30 minutes ago. Ugh. Debugging. Ugh. Live demos get through the worst. <laughs> oh my goodness, right? Okay. And then as my final slide, you can't come to one of my presentations without seeing something from the Simpsons. I hope you can hear this. We can't hear it, but I've seen this one before. <laughs> okay, can't hear it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, too bad. I'll work on that because I'd like to do this um, uh, presentation for Evolving Drupal next month. Okay, that's the uh, presentation. Thank you. And are there any questions? All right. I'm going to go ahead and let people unmute themselves again. All you responsible, nice people. If I can figure out how to do that. Hold on one second. Um, all right. Everyone can unmute themselves now if there's any questions. And we have a few new new faces joined us kind of throughout your presentation as well. So Eric, what's the advantage of OrbStack? What does it bring to the table? Okay, so OrbStack Let's 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 get let's let let's let them tell us. Oh. <laughs> Docker containers. OrbStack is a fast, light, easy way, or you can read that too, run Docker containers in Linux, right? Mm -hmm. So the, 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 com the components you need to run DDEB with a, uh, a, um, a, a backend database, you would need something like a Docker desktop or OrbStack or Kalima, or then there's Lima from which uh, Kalima had been derived. So you, you you must have this. I mean, you can run Drupal from SQL Lite or SQL Lite, however people pronounce that, right? Then you pro you might not need a uh, backend system to hold your databases, but mm -hmm. generally speaking, we use MySQL or MariaDB, um, and um, uh, so you need this you need this thing too. Wait, well, so this is run. You're saying because you need a container to run your database? 
I'm saying, isn't that isn't that what the orb stack does? Right, the orb stack or the 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 container. Oh, cancel this, right? Or the container. Um, um, you've got to have some place. Well, the con there's mm -hmm. multiple containers, right? So one is running mm -hmm. your web front end. Yeah. I mean, so, so my, you need. My answer, yeah. Right, because otherwise, like you were talking about, like you had a path mapping inside the Docker container of our WW HTML, um, right? Because that's where the Drupal code is located within the container. Right. You know, my answer wasn't correct. I I, I can see that now, right? But it also has the DB. Am, yeah, yeah right, DB so, and web, right? Different two different containers. Right. So, so I mean, I think it's it's. Right, it's giving you the ability to run Docker containers, like it's shipping Docker for the Mac, basically. Right. I don't. I don't yeah. know what the advantage of over Docker Desktop is. Maybe it says it's faster. I mean, Docker yeah. Desktop does run kind of slow. Yeah, and, and and this, I think this could be easily swapped out with Docker Desktop. Uh, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, you know, Kalima was was this nice treat, and and I and I think. Somehow, I, I, if I recall it correctly, Kalima, Kalima and Mutagen were somehow tied together at one point, but then Mutagen was rolled directly into um, DDEV, right, which made Kalima less necessary. And so the, 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 the luster came off of it, and now, and now, of course, it's not even recommended. But to keep, keep your life, life simple, yes, you could uh, um, use uh, Docker Desktop instead of OrbStack. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Did you try a rancher? I know that one also has a graphical interface. And sometimes, I mean, ARP stack does a couple of performance things as well, but the graphical interface is a selling point sometimes when it comes to that or Docker Desktop or Rancher, whereas Colima, Lima CTL, and some of the others don't have that. So you have to be comfortable with the console. Oh, cool. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good to know. You can see um, Rancher. Rancher is one of one of the ones that are that are um, recommended. Yeah, I mean, I, I think all of these. Yeah, basically, the, the main thing they're getting you is a version of Docker that runs on the on the Mac. So, um, right. I mean, I'm even using Docker Desktop on the Windows. I haven't on Linux. I haven't tried the other ones for the reason that it gives you like a rootless Docker install. Um, doing that, so it's not an issue on the Mac because you're actually running inside a VM, right? Like on the Mac, Docker is running typically inside a VM because it doesn't run directly on the Mac operating system. Um, whereas with Linux, right, you don't need the VM, but you don't mm -hmm. need to. Right. But then the risk is if you run Docker just directly, the root user in the container is the root user on your system, which is a, a good way to get hosed. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, you could. That that's a nice thing if you have a Linux, an actual Linux machine. I mean, it's basically the same. And if you're running Docker desktop on Mac, right? That mm -hmm. um, e, Docker is not running as a privileged user, um, so it can't destroy your whole machine. Mm -hmm. No, that's 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 really that's really good stuff. You know, you know, like like I say, I, I was a, I was a happy camper with Kalima. And then it kind of crumbled apart in my hands. And then I, I looked up, looked it up, and I was like, "Oh, look at that! Not even recommended anymore." And then, and then I, I was talking about that with my colleagues, and they were, and they were like, "Oh, yeah, it's not, it's not." Um, you know, they didn't know because, you know, it was a split on our team between who's using Kalima and who's using Docker Desktop, right? So, you know, at that point, I just jumped on Orb Stack. I'm like, "All right, good enough." You know, twelve, twelve more days, right? You know? Sure. <laughs> What's going to happen, right? <laughs> Yeah, the other thing I caution if you were, uh, and this bit me recently when I was trying to get Xdebug set up for work stuff, um, is you said go on like the command line and, and type PHP, you say PHP V or something that gave you an indication that Xdebug was installed. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know how DDEV is set up, but yeah, we're using PHP FPM. So Xdebug can be in, the extension could be on for the command line interpreter and not on for the FPM interpreter. Oh, 
So you really need to go into like Drupal's PHP info. Maybe you can demo that if you have uh, yeah, Drupal ops. That's, yeah, go I into do. the status page because um, that's where you actually need to look because um, if you don't see it, you may see it on the command line and not see it there, depending on which which of your interpreters yeah. it's enabled for. So well, that's very I interesting. Like. That almost, I don't even see X debug on there. Like you might. Oh, could that have been why? Yeah, it should be printing down here. Is that why my demo failed? It could be. Well, except this is FPM, right? And you, it failed for you on the command line. So it's, that's what I'm saying. This is definitely a gotcha, oh. right? Like it could be enabled on one and not the other. Um, but you had it stop. In the IDE, right? But maybe, yeah, or no, did you disable it? No, I did. I disabled it because you know. Yeah. A oh, so peak, if you just right now. So re-enable it and reload this page, and maybe you'll see it again. It might be. Okay. It's probably turning on and off the um. The PHP extension and maybe reloading um. Your no. uh, F FPM now. No, here. it's not actually. Yeah, yeah. Here, let me put let me put this down here so we can we can see it better. Right, so I am definitely reloading, and I do not have X debug here. Oh, interesting. Oh, excuse me, I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong stack. Okay. I have to be. I have to be over here. Um, this one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, here it comes. Maybe. Oh, now it's trying. Now it thinks it's debugging. Uh. No. Yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, making the point that is that this is not always easy, Eric. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Look at that. Right. That's why yeah. I made this. That's why I made the um the screen captures because I knew those wouldn't fail. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that yeah that bit me uh, when trying to get it set up is um, um, the um, X debug. You can turn it on and off with a um, environment variable, and um, one of my colleagues has accidentally built that environment variable of, of with X debug off in the Docker container, and so it would there was no way to turn it on basically. Like it just, oh. it just failed. Um, oh. So, but so I don't know if this this command to X debug on and off is enabling and disabling the um, PHP extension or doing something else. Yeah, because right? if it to enable or disable the PHP extension, yeah, again for the web server, you probably have to restart PHP FPM or restart the web server. That's another, you know. Little another another whole gotcha. setup. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. No, no. Huh. Oh, it's an interesting, interesting feedback. No, no. So obviously, it's not as simple as 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 we would have thought, huh? Yeah, I think the hmm. other thing I don't know. DDev may set this up, but yeah, you have to. Um, uh, yeah, the other tricky bit about using Docker, right, is that you have to connect back to your IDE running on your local machine, which is not sort of the same network as it's not like on not like you can connect to localhost because localhost would just loop back to the same Docker container. Um, so uh, there's a special like host name that Docker supports, um, like host.docker.internal, I think. I think it is not if you do like if you find the IP address for host.docker.internal that's basically connects back to your local machine and it seems like it's the same on Mac and Linux for me currently in Docker desktop at least um, but I don't know if it generically is the same but you you may have to configure 
if you don't have like this kind of VDEV setup, you may have to configure Xdebug to with that IP address so it knows where to connect back. Um, and yeah, I, I would oh. give a plug like uh, Xdebug for what is really helpful for things like when you're not sure what's going on in a loop, like a for each loop or something, or when you're trying mm -hmm. to debug Drupal core code and it's just like, you have no idea where, like you have to really dig into the call stack. Like some of these things, you just mm -hmm. don't know where it goes, um, especially there may be magic getters and setters um, in like the entity API. Um, mm -hmm. so, Right, so a lot so, of times, you know, I'm, I'm, I mentioned all that. You, yeah, you, you did mention it. Reiterating, yeah, like if you, sure, like I, there are points in the past where like I started de debugging session, followed some piece of, some flow in core, and I'm like, wow, I had no idea that went to touch that piece of code, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a point taken. That's why I thought the, um, an install hook was a good sort of intro, but then it it didn't do it, didn't work right. When I demoed it, oh well. Yeah. Tim, that was a good well, demo. Yeah, good. The only other thing I've seen that uh, can be a little tricky sometimes with X debug is if you're trying to debug Drush commands, because Drush commands I have never really seen somebody do what you tried to do there to have a update hook just connected to it. But so that was cool. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure whatever glitch happened there, it might have been just because you had PHP Storm and VS Code, both of them kind of like fighting the different ports. So it might have been just uh, one of those things. Yeah, you know, that that's a possibility. I mean, I literally spent my, spent my day um, debugging a um, um, a mess of an update hook in um, Content Hub. I, don't, well, I, sh I shouldn't talk that way. But I literally spent my day doing exactly what I just demoed. And so to have it have it fail like that, I mean, I'll sleep okay tonight. Don't worry, everyone. But so I'm sorry I couldn't couldn't you know finish the demo with it with a win. So hey, no worries. It was pretty ambitious because I never <sighs> seen somebody do uh, both IDs and try to target the same port and achieve kind of those results. But I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm sure um, whatever that is, I with XDebug, I never had that issue. So I'm sure it's something like maybe that uh, DDA plugin for PHP debug, if you're using that one as the main or the BS code one, it's stepping on each other. Yeah. No, that time that worked. Well, anyhow. <laughs> So close. So, yeah, so so close. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep working on it because I, I want I want I do want this to work because it because it it you know as you were saying Peter right when you really want to dig into some of this stuff right you you really need the debugger to let it to let it really send you and the the amount of what we didn't get to see he oh we might be able to now that this is actually running yes this sort of thing i think is just wonderful you know when you get you know if you live for this kind of stuff you know you have to be that kind of a nerd but this sort this sort of a thing the how much information it can give you like i was able to go back to my to to my stakeholder and say to them okay geo solutions has 10 children these are the children is it okay if those get deleted too? You know, you can really, you know, you can really dig in. It's, it's. This is all very wonderful too. What you get, what you get out of this, out of this part of the debugging experience, but also what what's happening in here. And many of many of these have drop downs as well. But you know, since the um, uh, that part of the demo failed, I couldn't I couldn't show you that. But it, you know, it, it's not that this saved my bacon, saved all of our bacon's. You know that 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 I was able to say to them, "Oh, do you really want me to delete that parent term because once it's gone, it's gone, right? And all its children, right?" And then they were able to come back and say, "Yes, that's fine." So, so very cool. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How did you get the idea to include the live video on the keynote slides? I don't think I've seen that before. That's pretty clever. I might use that myself because I've seen it cool. where you switch back to a video or something, but then, you know, you kind of have to keep switching back and forward. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, you know, like, I, like I say, these won't be in the PDF. I just dragged and dropped it. You know, I'm, you know, I use QuickTime 
to create a screen to create a um oh yeah i won't i won't talk with my hands right i use quicktime to create a um a screen um capture and then save that screen screen capture to an mov file and then just drop the mov file here into um uh whatchamacallit into keynote which i could probably do from here too but i, I didn't know that much about keynote and you know it's just you know so I just just got that just got all that working, but I'll include those um, MOVs uh, along with along with the PDF of the slides. I'm, I I'm, I hope others find those useful as well. But that's how I did it. Thank you. All right, um, we've got some time for questions. If there's any questions, comments, discussion topics. I'm curious about Leora's desire to use whatever it was simple news oh yeah um, oh and i think oh, yeah. i mean Luria, Le leora if you don't remember i mean that was originally how like drupal.org did like email announcements right this is like um so currently the sis this is the system currently somebody clobbers together an email uh, a, a bunch of announcements on a friday and at the last minute, sends it out to people when people are very busy getting ready for the Jewish Sabbath and says, is this correct? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, there's got to be a better way to do it. So uh, it's just basically if, if different people are responsible for different pieces, they could go to a page and they just they don't have to change anything if it's correct. And it just automatically goes into the announcement and then somebody... Yeah, can just press the button and then and then they get an email that has real content instead of getting an email that has this person's clobbered together piece where this particular person happens to make a lot of mistakes. So anyway, mm. uh, it's probably not going to happen, but I, I, I thought it'd be a, an amusing thing to just try it and play around with it. Yeah, I don't know how it works now. I think it had like a dedicated content type and Somehow you oh, could trigger okay. when when you when at what point you know saving that node caused it to send out the email. Okay, so I was thinking of a field on a on a node, like you would have a field that, and you would say, "Okay, I want this field to be my newsletter." Like, whatever. At some point, maybe I'd play with it. Yeah, I think it was. Well, I I don't know how 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 it's changed since you know like Drupal five, but right. <laughs> Drupal five, right? Uh, well, they said quite, it's quite like literally. I think that was the last and time they I named used all these yeah. third parties, you know. And I'm like, simple sounds good, right? So anyway, but do you, do you already have a Drupal site that these people no, use? No, 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 no. Oh. Actually, they're using Squarespace, which I okay. hate, and everything is just done really poorly. I mean. Their homepage yeah. consists of announcements for other community events that have nothing to do with the organization. So, yeah, I, I had the, the I saw Squarespace's markup. It's it's not good. One time uh, we we were trying to we were trying to get some SEO out of, out of a Squarespace site, and it was just it wasn't good. You know what was going on in there? They probably cleaned it up since then, but they, that was a few years ago. Yeah, well, it, it's very hard to uh, like. It's just the site is pretty disorganized. Like I was looking for a homepage where it has like a, a blurb and it turns out the site has like two pages, two about pages that have that blurb, but the, the homepage just has events that aren't really relevant to uh, the organization. And it's so anyway, but that's just uh, me trying to convince. So little by little, I actually built a um, somebody did an inv inventory list. Um, they did it in Excel. So I imported it into, this is the first thing I did, imported that into Drupal. And that was kind of neat because I showed them how Drupal views works and how you could group things by inventory. And it was a good demo of, of why Drupal is better than um, just a regular website. So... I don't know these these, these they're, they're not most most of the people in the group just uh don't really think technically so it'll, it will be a stretch if this actually happens but meanwhile i cringe on fridays when they send out these wrong announcements mm -mm. i bet but look at this thing simple news this has been around forever yeah but, but yeah you know works with drupal 9.3 or drupal 10. 
Yeah, there you go. Somebody's been updating it. Yeah. And and if it's a simple module, it might be simple to look at and for me to learn how how mm. they put it together. <laughs> you, you say simple, I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. Well, it does something Just to the effect of it wraps the it wraps the like node content in like HTML tags, so you lose your theme, right? And then that's what gets sent out. To yeah, the, the plain text really would be general. fine, you know, just, uh, I, I prefer email that, that's unformatted, personally, when you're getting announcements, you just want to read the announcements. Good to know, I'll, I'll update your Drupal Camp New Jersey email aesthetics, text only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Um. Yeah, do you want to talk at all about the camp, Sean, since that is, I mean, you mentioned at the beginning, but um, we're like at the point in the year where we're, we often realize we actually have to sort of start organizing. I guess it's not in January, so it's not quite as much of a rush, but. Right, yeah. I mean, I think sometime next month we will, you know, start turning things up, sending out requests for sponsorship and things like that. We have to update all this stuff, so we've moved fiscal hosts again and there's some and and stuff that we have to do there still um yeah. but now we're with the midwest open source alliance which a bunch of drupal camps have moved over to um, so we'll see how that goes and hopefully we won't have to do this until somebody else takes over <laughs> <laughs> Okay, which um, number I, I i i've lost track of which number of fiscal host this is this is number four us. at least is it four yeah da da SFC, open collective foundation i guess this is the fourth yeah okay yeah. so fun times there but yeah i think you know just uh you know especially evolve drupal coming up in in september i would like to get us a little bit more um noise around it too because i think that'll be a good chance to gain some eyeballs we maybe wouldn't have gotten otherwise because you know our list hasn't really grown and changed all that much over the past several years yeah so if you're interested in helping or you know talking it up please do so but yeah we need all the things like usual we've got logistics pretty nailed down um it's more so around like getting new speakers, getting new sponsors, all that kind of stuff that we need help with. And then, you know, running it the day of is always a fun event to uh, run around and chase speakers down and solve audio issues and whatever else might come up. Is it still tagged as Drupal Camp as part of the name or mm -hmm. is that, I'm wondering if as a point, is that actually hurting? I know? mean, that's hurting us get new people probably. Um, but uh, we haven't really thought about pivoting it. I know like Stanford does Stanford web camp, but it used to be a Drupal camp, but now it's a web camp. They still talk at least like half of it is Drupal. So, um, you know, there's maybe some discussion to pivot it. Um, I think Technically, we're called Drupal NJ under OCF. We were, and I think that's how we're signed on it to um, the Midwest Open Source Alliance. But you know, it's it's kind of just marketing because we definitely have other people come and talk non Drupal topics. Um, yeah, well, I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, we could also just like um, market it as a more of a web development. Mm -hmm. thing you know so people find those words if they're looking for them i i don't know kevin is this an issue with for you with like internal sponsorship or or are you oh, just generally general it's hard to appeal? explain that it, it's hard to explain that it isn't just drupal mm -hmm. um when it's in the name and it's better you know if it was like i don't do, do i don't do drupal anymore um, my project does have some Drupal in it, but somebody else has that. I've been moved on to some of the more <laughs> obscure, more challenging areas. That, well, Drupal, not that Drupal is not challenging. Um, 
but because it says Drupal, it it I have. I get at least a lot of pushback internally because it does being Drupal doesn't align with us. Mm. Um, as we have gone to, are going towards, um, you know, just setting up a site with Drupal in it. You got the database, you got the web, the web server, PHP server. Um, we're going now towards more, um, more static websites or jam stack things along those lines and just having lots of services supporting, um, Thanks. And that makes a lot of sense for pharma because like you're bound to like have specific versions of things up. Right. And like, you don't really have live editing going on all that much. Right. Once you know, it's more of a, here's the, here's a version of the, here's this version of the site that was FDA approved and cleared and all this other fun stuff. Right. Um, they still, they, there's constant updates going on no matter yeah. what, but the bottom line is to set, if you don't need a real database for most of your stuff, you know, if you can put out a flat file site, that's real damn fast. You yep. know, um, there's there's minimal setup for it, and it tends to, in you can run you know a lot of Jamstack that way. Yep. So, and did you no want JS. To love Gatsby? Or are you uh, no Gatsby? No. No, you're you're done. It. Uh, I, I'm not sure what to say about that, uh, <laughs> but we have a long tail. So yeah. there's uh, tons of sites. Um, as soon as you get one on a new thing and, and you'll never get everybody of it. So some will leapfrog mm -hmm. across multiple, um, tech you know, across to a different technology. Um, and some will stick in that because it ain't broken. Ain't, we don't yeah. want to fix it. But on the other hand, Drupal comes out with security patches, you know, mm -hmm. once a month. <laughs> and so a flat file system or flat file sites are a lot harder to break. For sure. So anyhow, that's kind of where we're headed. And I guess we got off the, the Drupal if we can, if you were to drop that name, I think, I'm not sure that we, I'm not sure that that's going to give us um, sponsorship from JJ, yeah. but I would think some other companies would be along that line. Cause um, at one point boss said, well, you don't want to be known as a one trick pony or something. Mm -hmm. And, and that kind of by labeling yourself, Drupal sounds like you're, you know, what about WordPress? You know, it's, yeah or a bunch not that we're not not that we're going to wordpress <laughs> well and that's why we pivoted the meetup name years yep. ago now um because we were generally talking about things that weren't just one content management system or another it was more applicable things so like eric's presentation was Drupal focus was also about debugging which applies to any programming so correct yeah all right well Good notes. Thank you, Kevin, as always. My personal observations is the, the comments that were made are not necessarily those of J&J &J or... <laughs> we'll, we'll strike this from the record. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, are we still recording? Uh, we were, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, um, we'll, we'll fix it in post. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. I uh, said nothing that's that... that yeah, nothing that is... I, of course. I would believe it was terribly private. No, yeah. Um, and so um, just uh, in in the in the land of uh, the Drupal sphere, like Drupal 11 came out, so that's exciting. It just keeps marching on. Uh, but the Starshot thing is, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still mixed about it. I guess maybe I'm old guard <laughs> now because I'm like, you know, the marketing side of it is like, oh, well, this is for like, 90 something percent of everybody should use this thing going forward probably and then you know you're really like techie you know nerdy folks should use the core and build from there right so i think I, that's yeah. that's an interesting I with it. Like, I marketing liked it. Pivot. yeah yeah i liked it no i i do think like it's very hard to sell people on you know the big drupal especially to me mm -hmm. the auto updates would make a big difference because i maintain more press sites and I don't have to do that much to maintain them. Yeah. So 
Okay, I'm not familiar with this. And you would get all the Drupal <laughs> goodies. Like you could get views and, you know, you could organize things. You could get mm -hmm. content types build it, built in. And I, I went in and it's, it had event and it had blog. And I'm like, yeah, those are two content types that get used a lot. So yep. yeah, the rest it doesn't have an importer lot. yet. So yeah, if I have time, maybe I'll try to import some Drupal 10 stuff. And I don't know. I don't know if I could help them with it. That's like hard, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're very ambitious because I think what Barcelona is the in September or October. And they're, they want to have at least some kind of like big progress report because the timeline was like six months or something ridiculous to try mm -hmm. to get this off the ground. And I think they're like in week 11 or something like that right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting. We'll see where it goes. I mean, I don't think like enterprise wise, people don't really want their, people don't really want their site builders doing design. And so I think that's going to be an interesting, like, how do you lock that down permissions wise kind of thing? Because now they're building this, uh, like, uh, theme buildery experience where you can, oh. where you can theme your site within Drupal and you never have to leave. So it's very, there was a thing way back in the day, uh, Drupal gardens use this, right, Peter, that, um, Oh yeah, Drupal Gardens had yeah its own custom built one. Uh, there were some other. There was a, there was a there was a module I used at one point to do like microsites on a main website. Yeah, um, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it'll come to me eventually. But yeah, I mean it's like it's very much harkening back to those days, but with a better UX. <laughs> right. It's like panels everywhere, and then you can do design on top of it. Is kind of the feeling. Um, right. But I mean, which is. Yeah, great if you want to make a quick throwaway website mm -hmm. or replace Wix or compete with Wix, but yeah. Yeah, well, and I think um, it's React on the front end, so it's like, you know, everything else. I mean, they, I mean, the outcome of this was basically like they talked to the Gutenberg WordPress people, had that, they spent a bunch of money to talk to them to try to come up with a plan, and Drupal was like, ah, eh, we don't want Gutenberg, essentially. <laughs> And so they're like, we're going to build our own is, is really what, what it boils down to. And we're just going to turn things on all the, all the new things they were working on. They just kind of bundled into this, even though they're already in core to some degree, right? The recipes APIs in core. Now the navigation improvements are in core, but not, um, stable. So it's, you know, it's interesting to see it march along, but you know, I guess we'll see something to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I it's what whatever it is. It's usually like it's. I've seen this come multiple times before. It's like here here's the big easy button, but if you want to do anything, mm -hmm. you know, if you, as long as you're playing in the in their small sandbox, you're fine. Mm -hmm. If you want to move out of that sandbox, you know, yeah, then, like how do you eject to a custom built site? Yeah, yeah, because. If as long as your requirements totally line up with theirs, then you're then you're probably in great shape. Yeah. But if you have requirements and that aren't covered by that or are in addition to that, yeah, you'll probably get you'll probably have challenges with it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess it goes a lot back to being able to have a website out of the box. Um mm -hmm you know, with a push of a more push of a button. Um, but I imagine it still needs, it's still, it's still Drupal under the covers. And so you still need, you still need to have all the other stuff behind it. So you still need to go through the setup mm -hmm. and have a database. You still have to have your front end and whatnot. And so you're not really buying that one. Um, another great thing about static sites, you need more, you need more services. You just horizontally punch out more, um, more web servers. Yeah, and as long as you don't have a huge draw on um, dynamic content or something, then to run for services, you know, you don't have. There's nothing. You have a big spike in load. Punch out more web servers, and then have it go back. So. 
anyhow, um, I guess we could talk about these all finer things. Um, <laughs> I'm going to. I enjoyed eating, seeing some friendly faces again. Although I didn't go on the, I didn't share my video today. Uh, it was nice to see and hear from both Sean and uh, everybody else. So, because I know I haven't, yeah. I've had some conflicts and not been able to attend for a while. Yeah. Does anyone want to see that Xtbug info page? Because I have that locally. It's not exciting, but if you want to see what that looks like, sure. PHP info. Are you a presenter or co host? You're now a co host. Okay. Lucky me. <laughs> uh, hopefully, I won't share anything too crazy, but anyway. So, this is um, this is the admin status PHP page, like Eric was showing. Um, his, I don't know why his was a different style, but anyway, you can see this does mention XT debug here. Um, I was looking I, at eight point three, right? and you're going to find that big, the big patch in a moment, right? Yeah, and then and then down here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there's this big section, and this is the bit, right? Enable features. This is where your Xdebug mode environment variable can end up stomping on whatever else you have set in the any file. So there's like, mm -hmm. you can enable and disable through the any file, but then you could override the any file with the environment variable. Um, so you see. This is when I was struggling. I had all these showed disabled, even though I enabled it in the any file. But so this is enabled um, there. And yeah, it, it's also like if you have to watch by getting bit by old documentation because you see, like, there's this long list of settings that are all renamed or removed in Xdebug 3. Um, not for reasons I necessarily know. Um, and we didn't really talk about it, but uh, one of the things you can do with Xdebug is um, code coverage and your uh, tests, automated tests. And you can also do um, performance uh, uh, kind of tracing with uh, something called, I think it's called cache grind. So, I mean, Xdebug does have like a ton of uh, features. Um, yes, yeah, so there's this code coverage feature. A profiler, which is performance. So there's a lot of features built in here, not just the step debugger. Um, so if if you need any of those things, yeah, you should think about it. Because and yeah, the Xdebug three, you can like turn it off and still have the extension enabled, and it won't like kill your performance. Um, so uh, good, oh, good. I'm glad you brought that up because I was I was glancing at my uh, PHP ini as well. And I, and I saw that it has a different representation than it used to. So thanks, yeah. Peter. Yeah, it definitely, when I tried to get, when whenever they brought in Xdebug 3 and I was like trying to get it to work, it, I was beating my head on a long time for what the right any settings were. Yeah. All right. Anything else to recall an early night? I don't have anything that those. Someone's comment, yeah, and SQLite makes you think we should do another quick demo on like running Drupal with SQLite just from a checkout because mm -hmm. um, I feel like the kind of, I mean, maybe DDEV makes it easy, but I feel like DDEV also, like some of these things just obscure what's happening, um, especially yeah. if you're like a newer developer. So I don't know if that's something people would be interested in or we can poll people um, for a really zero to set up uh, starting from without a Docker or anything else. Um, and you can use then the PHP web server also. So you basically SQLite, so you don't need a database server, PHP web server, you don't need a web server. So you can just run Drupal basically from a checkout with PHP installed. So um, is that some of the people already know, does everyone already know how to do that? Or is that something that would be of interest? Or people aren't sure. Anyway, all right. Well, we'll. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Leora would be interested. All right. Okay. Well, we'll I'll consider that for a, a future. A future. Well, the event. thing about the thing about DDEV is it, is it is it it puts it all in a you know in a big box, so you don't have to you mm -hmm. don't have to 
like what you just said, I knew what you were talking about there, SQL light and then and then having having it all like that. So the obscurity in with DDAV that comes with it is in in what I was trying to do tonight was was to to I thought it an advantage because you don't have to know about all that. You're a developer and you're sort of the DevOps side of getting your system to work. You just load up load up DDEV. Mm -hmm. Sure. No, there's definitely advantages. Like I'm not, you know, um I think oh, yeah. It 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 the you know, the flip side is just it's like if you want to understand kind of hey how does this stuff all actually work or like what is you know then I think that that uh, complexity of having it pre baked for you you know makes it actually hard to like understand how the pieces fit together um, so it's it's you know uh, the it's valuable both ways. I was seeing more of it, more in terms of learning experience than necessarily like, yeah, if you want to get up and running, uh, you probably want to use DDoV. So, anyhow, okay. Um, so we'll maybe do that next time. Alrighty. Well, we will see you all sometime in September, whenever that is. Uh, the 12th, I think, maybe? Um, oh, yeah, and I'm probably, yeah, I might present something at the evolving web thing, evolving, evolved, evolved Drupal New York. So, mm -hmm. and you saw, and you said you might go. Yeah. When is the, the 20th of September? September 20th. Okay. We'll send an email out about it pretty soon. I think I'm going to ping them tomorrow. Nothing else we can twist our arm to sponsor the camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sean. Have a good one. Good night, everybody. Thanks, guys. Good night. Bye. -bye.